All right, we're in a helicopter handbook, uh, chapter four. We're going to be on page uh, 14 and 15 of 18. We're to be in hydraulics. Just went over electrical systems going into hydraulics. Most helicopters, other than smaller piston-powered helicopters, incorporate the use of hydraulic actuators to overcome high control forces. A typical hydraulic system consists of actuators, also called servos, on each flight control, a pump which is usually driven by the main rotor transmission, and a reservoir to store the hydraulic fluid. Some helicopters have accumulators located on the pressure side of the hydraulic system. This allows for continuous fluid pressure into the system. A switch in the cockpit can turn the system off, although it is left on under normal conditions. When the pilot places the hydraulic switch circuit breaker into the the on position, the electrical power is being removed from the solenoid valve, allowing hydraulic fluid to enter the system. When the switch slash circuit breaker is put in the off position, the solenoid valve is now de-energized and closes, which then allows the pilot to maintain control of the helicopter with the hydraulic fluid in the actuators. This is known as a fail-safe system. If helicopter electrical power is lost in flight, the pilot is still able to maintain control of the hydraulic system. A pressure indicator in the cockpit may also be installed to monitor the system. When making a control input, the servo is activated and provides an assisting force to move the respective flight control, thus reducing the force the pilot must provide. These boosted flight controls ease pilot workload and fatigue. In the event of hydraulic system failure, a pilot is still able to control the helicopter, but the control forces are very heavy. And those helicopters in which the control forces are so heavy that they cannot be moved without hydraulic assistance, two or more independent hydraulic systems may be installed. Some helicopters use hydraulic accumulators to store pressure, which can be used for a short period of time in a mercy and the hydraulic pump fails. This gives you enough time to land the helicopter with normal control. Stability augmentation systems. Not yet. Let's look at this. This will be a typical uh, figure 4-23, a typical hydraulic system for helicopters in the light to medium range. Mm -hmm. Pressure is indicated in red and return is indicated in green. All right. We're moving on to stability augmentation systems. So stability augmentation systems. Some helicopters incorporate a stability augmentation system, an SAS, to help stabilize the helicopter in flight and in a hover. The original purpose and design allowed decreased pilot workload and lessened fatigue. It allowed pilots to place an aircraft at a set altitude to accomplish other tasks or simply stabilize the aircraft for long cross-country flights. Force trim. Force trim was a passive system that simply held a cyclic in a position that gave a control force to transitioning airplane pilots who had become accustomed to such control forces. The system uses a magnetic clutch and springs to hold the cyclic control in the position where it was released. The system does not use sensor-based data to make corrections, but rather is used by the pilot to hold the cyclic in a desired position. The most basic version only applies to the cyclic requiring the pilot to continue power and tail rotor inputs. With the force trim or in, the or in use, the pilot can override the system by disengaging the system through the use of a force system by uh, use of a force trim release button or with greater resistance can physically manipulate the control. Some recent basic systems are referred to as attitude retention systems. So an active augmentation system. Actual system use electrical actuators that provide input to the hydraulic servos. These servos receive control commands from a computer that senses external environmental inputs such as wind and turbulence. SAS complete complexity varies by manufacturers but can, but can be as sophisticated as sophisticated as providing three axis stability. That is computer-based inputs that adjust attitude, power, and aircraft trim for the more stabilized fight, flight. Once engaged by the pilot, these systems use a multitude of sensors from stabilized gyros to electrical mechanical actuators that provide instantaneous inputs to all flight controls without pilot assistance. As with other SAS, 
it may be overridden or disconnected by the pilot at any time. Helicopters with complex automatic flight control systems, AFCS, and autopilots normally have a trim switch referred to as a beeper trim or a coolie hat. This switch is used when minor changes to the trim setting are desired. Stability augmentation systems reduce pilot workload by improving basic aircraft control harmony and decreasing disturbances. These systems are very useful when the pilot is required to perform other duties such as sling loading and search and rescue operations. Other inputs such as heading, speed altitude, and navigation information may be supplied to the computer to form complete autopilot systems. So we'll stop there and then we'll go into autopilot. So that was page uh, yeah, pretty much uh, 15 and 16 of 18. Got right here into 17, but now we'll go into autopilot. So that was uh, stability augmentation systems. Pretty cool. Yeah, now we'll go into autopilot on page 17 of 18. All right, see ya.